tennis, a sport of huge highs and devastating lows. Travelling the world playing tennis is a hell of a job. There's no off-season, really. You can be playing the next week. You could be playing the next day. But what goes into every top tennis player? Lots of pressure and loads of expectation. Before they even reach the top 100 or 200. Once you feel like you can mentally compete, you're almost halfway there. What does it take to become the best? Your life becomes tennis. It revolves around tennis. It's 52 weeks a year. We all sacrifice our lives. Behind the scenes with Britain's future game changers. People just see the end product. They don't see the tough times. All these guys at the top are willing to do whatever it takes and if you aren't, you might not get as far as your talent deserves to. From the young guns, Ben Bartram, Felix Gill, Sonny Kurtal and Arthur Ferry, to double specialists Ali Collins and Freya Christie and those poised to enter their prime as a player. Alistair Gray, Eden Silva, Ryan Penniston and Billy Harris. This is Beyond the Baseline. There's so much insecurity in tennis. Confidence fluctuates from week to week. Form fluctuates from week to week. You know, the venues change, the hotels change, the conditions change, the balls change. We love what we do. We wouldn't be doing it if we didn't. Uh, but it is definitely tough at times. It's important to kind of have your own stable foundations to build your career from. Here we go, come on, come on. Here we go, come on. To have a team in tennis is, is super important and I'm lucky enough to have some really good people by my side. There's so much going on outside of your team that you kind of need a little sort of anchor to be able to go back to when things are going wrong. That's the whole life of a professional tennis player. I'm Sonia Cartel, uh, I'm 21, and I'm a British professional tennis player. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to ask. <laughs> Talk to us about your dad. He's quite a big tennis fan, right? Yeah. Uh, I've never actually spoken about it, but he loves Roger Federer way too much. I get messages from him every day of like, Federer's highlights, like his top 10 best shots. And now he's starting to send them to my coach as well. Yeah, ridiculous. All I get every day is memes, Federer memes. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely crazy. Brighton, home to Sonny Cartal and the club where she first found tennis. She just used to be too scared to play at the start. I was so shy, I but to used to, <laughs> the, the hat wouldn't come above this. When she was talking to you, you could never make eye contact, ever. And it took a good four months to, to actually get me on the court. And I remember fell over, grazed my leg, went off crying. That was it. Didn't step back on the court for five months. <laughs> so, the hat's got a little bit higher, over the years, but the hat is still up. The hat is still on. <laughs> my coaches all around me have said right from the start that they thought that I had something special. Was it 14 years? Yeah, I was six, so... Fifteen. Maybe coming up... Coming up to fifteen? Coming up to fifteen. I always believed that I, I could be... I could potentially make a living from it. When the sport goes from your hobby to your profession, and it definitely changes the relationship 100%. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I have had moments that I've thought about, you know, do I want to do this for the rest of my life? Like. You have to sacrifice a lot. Double gym now. Double bubble. But, you know, I don't think I could go more than two weeks without tennis in my life. Sonny's route to the professional circuit isn't the only way in, with some players preferring a trip across the Atlantic. And now please welcome a British rising talent, Arthur Ferry. My name's Arthur Ferry. I'm a 20-year-old from Wimbledon and I play professional tennis. My name's Alistair Gray. Uh, I'm a tennis player. Uh, I went to American University for a couple of years uh, and now I'm playing on the tour. Spent the past three years at Stanford University in uh, San Francisco, California, working towards a degree in science, technology and society. I went to Texas Christian University. I wasn't physically ready to go on the tour and make any kind of impact at that point. Most of the guys who were top 10 and around my ranking and juniors went straight onto the pros. But I always had um, kind of college in my mind. I think the top end of college tennis is 
a lot higher than people think. I think it's top 200, top 300 level. It definitely prepares you to play on the big stage. I worked hard at, at university, came out at 22, 23, around that time. Um, I was much more ready for the tour at that point. I reached number one in college last year. Uh, briefly, I finished number three this year, uh, playing only from January to May. So I feel like I've kind of reached the, the top, um, quote unquote, of, of college tennis. But yeah, I feel like my level's there and ready to, to transition onto the Pro Tour. You know, everyone wants to be at the top, everyone wants to be number one, but, you know, stuff happens out of your control. Injuries, I've been injured uh, for the beginning part of the year, I'm starting to get back on it now. I think it's important for me to play a lot of matches, but yeah, what do they say? Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Three. Whilst Alistair and Arthur enjoyed time improving their game in the USA, Five. Sonny is enjoying the benefits of Six. early exposure and success on the Pro Tour, basing herself closer to home alongside the team at the LTA. Nine, good to slice. I think I've come onto this kind of scene very fast and abrupt, which has kind of put me on that trajectory that I am on now. I've been able to, you know, to play all the slams now, um, which is a big dream and something that 16 months ago wasn't even a realistic goal, so it wasn't even on the radar. Next one, 15. In clay court tennis, the pinnacle is the French Open. Roland Garros. So have you never actually been to Roland Garros at all? No, never have Very, uh, very passionate crowds. The crowds are very close to you. I love the clay courts and Paris itself, I absolutely love. 13 for two on clay this season. When you lost to Saramkova, even in Bath on the hard, she won the event. Yeah. Then when you lost, An unbelievable match too. then when you lost in oh, no. Glasgow, that person won the event and then you lost to Alves in Thingy and she won the event. So the overall winner has been the person that's beaten you. And you've always gone the distance in three sets, you know. French Open qualifying round one and a world top 100 player, Victoria Hrnchakova awaits. All of Sonny's hard work has led to this. Leading into it, I was, I was so excited to go there. You know, everyone talks about the courts, obviously, so being able to go there with my coach. I mean, he's the coach that start, I started with. So for him to be able to come to all these slams with me, it's, it was definitely a special moment for sure. A dream start for Sonny, storming the first set. Perfect length. Leaves from Czech of a staggering. The Slovak starting to look agitated here. That's too good. Three love up in the second, and Sonny on the brink of a hugely significant win. Could she close it out? I didn't get complacent. I didn't think I'd won it. She just played much better than I did for, for those games. When Chekova starting to impose herself in this match. Impressive from the Slovak. Cartel struggling here. Zero count. Ronchekova serves T. Cartel forehand deep. Ronchekova with the forehand into the forehand of Cartel, which sails long. An extraordinary turnaround from Ronchekova, but bitter disappointment for Cartel. She's going. The loss to me still stings. I think that one's always going to be a stinger. You know, you can't lose your concentration for a second because then they're, they're just going to jump on that. I don't think I've ever lost a match from being a 10 5 2 up. Um, so, but I just, the thing about tennis is there's always another tournament. So I think that definitely, that definitely helps. You know, you, you don't, you almost don't have time to kind of feel sorry for yourself and, you know, sulk a little bit because you've got a, you know, sky scanner and you've, you're flying to another country. A vital learning experience for Sonny on her first trip to the French Open. For Alistair, meanwhile, Back in competition on his journey back after injury, a trip to the Lexus Nottingham Tennis Centre. But straight away, a setback. How did you do that? Yesterday in practice. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. So, 
Uh, yeah, I'm just going back to the NTC and get it scanned. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. How are you getting back? Uh, my mum's coming, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope it's OK. Thank you. Thanks for your help yesterday. Cheers. See you later, guys. Thanks. An injury in practice throwing a whole summer into doubt. How did you do it again? What did you do? I uh, was just finishing a serve um, and then went to push off to my left and just rolled over the outside of it. Yeah. When you're competing at this level and pushing yourself, it, the margins are very small, aren't they? Yeah. You know, this is yeah. literally one day of practice before yeah. you were competing. To see those things you've done millions of times. Yeah, exactly. And it comes down to anyone. But... Well, it doesn't always help. I mean, I've worked in sport a long time. You're quite together. You're, uh, you're, you look like you're all right at the moment, but... Yeah, um, uh, it's part of part of the sport, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm obviously not thrilled about it. I would have really liked to play this week. Yeah. You've not had the roll of the dice this year, have you? Don't not think? so far. No. <laughs> but still smiling. Yeah. yeah. At the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Based on what the results were, which were in my case two ruptured ligaments, the team here at the LTA and outside consultants uh, helped me make the decision to get surgery. That would leave me with eight to ten weeks left right now. One, two, three, four. One of the difficulties, especially with players recovering from injury, is to then stay injury free. Is that painful? No, it's only painful at, uh, at this degree. A lot of players get injured, shake off the injury and come back and struggle to then deal with other injuries because of the increased load. Ultimately, you need to rehab the, the physical injury, but more often than not, you also need to think about the, the mental health and the well-being of the player whilst they're rehabbing that injury. You all right there? Yeah. Just be yeah. ready to grab a thing. Yeah. Not ready. Just have those your fingertips on it, mate. Yeah, please. It's important to give them a space to reflect and talk through how they're feeling, reminding them that they will come back and be able to play again. They just need to, to keep going through that. Then you get me trying to go max deadlift. <laughs> 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 Each little sign of improvement is what keeps you, keeps you going and definitely makes you appreciate the game, realise how lucky you are. You know, even if I can't play this season, I'll be supporting all my friends, um, all the Brits who are playing, trying to pick up lots of, lots of different things that I can take into my own game uh, for when I come back. It's not always the most talented tennis players that succeed. It can be the ones with the greater mental fortitude. All in all, Alistair Gray's ankle injury meant that he would miss the entire grass court season. But entering the autumn, there was light at the end of the tunnel as he worked with his team at the National Tennis Centre. So we're going to use a protective ranking. We're yeah, going to yeah. start competing October 30th, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have any idea what do you want to start playing? Yeah, well, there's... There's the last domestic tournament in Sunderland. Okay. So I think that might be a good start. That's indoors, right? It's indoors. It's been a tough year with injuries, being away yeah. from the court. Do you think that that's going to give you an edge over everyone else being away and building that fire? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely good. come through a lot of tough moments this year. Yeah. And, you know, the surgery was one thing, but then getting back into the swing of things and then the knee just getting reconditioned to everything as well took a little bit more time than expected but uh, I think we're in the final stretch now. I feel like my, my body's in a better shape now than I was before the injury, so oh, okay. I'm coming back in a better position. You getting ready to compete? Yeah, really looking forward to, to getting back out and competing and uh, getting on a plane wherever. I don't care Fair where. <laughs> Coming up next time... The grass court season is really important when you're a young, up-and-coming British player. Can Cartel get revenge for that Roland Garros defeat? My expectation is pretty high. I always looked up to Freya because she was a few years older. Sorry. Um. Wow. <laughs>
photo bomb. <laughs> How cute is that? Grass definitely suits my game. Impressive from Arthur Ferry. Good, Good first day in the office. Woo.